Hello and welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Today we want to talk about a product called LexDWare LexD Dashboard. So in a past video I reviewed the LexD Mosaic product which was a LexD GUI to manage LexD instances. And I thought that was a pretty good product but recently I ran into LexD Dashboard by LexDWare, which is an open source, web-based user interface capable of managing multiple LexD servers from a single location. LexD Dashboard can create LexD containers. It can start and stop and delete them. And LexD Dashboard can manage snapshots and backups, as well as downloading backups of LexD instances even to your local computer. LexD dashboard can be deployed on a LexD or Docker container and uses Ubuntu, Nginx, and PHP. So here's the LexDWare web page at LexDWare.com. You can see at the top that it has a link to GitHub and a link to Docker. And you can install this in either a Docker container or a LexD container. The GitHub page has basic documentation and you can see the products relatively new. It looks like uh, the oldest components here are dating back to about 10 months ago. And currently, the latest release is December 17th of 2021. And here are all the various capabilities that LexD Dashboard provides you. It's really a very full function GUI. And then over here, uh, we have installing it via the Docker image, which is very simple. I'll put this in the release notes, a Docker run uh, command. And I will also uh, include the installation procedure for putting uh, LexD dashboard in a LexD image. And that's what I plan on doing in this demonstration. But for right now, let's go see what the product looks like. So if you have it installed, and I've installed it on a local address on my network, I have a LexDWare login here. I'm going up to my Bitwarden and I'm going to log in. And as soon as you log in, once the product is configured, it's going to list your various hosts. I have two hosts. Uh, one is my, uh, uh, there are actually two QNAP NASs that I have. And yes, I use Container Station on those, but I really have a feeling that uh, LexDWare is going to be a more powerful management interface. Um, other than actually using the command line. So as an example, if I click over here on my, uh, on my node where I have all of my production activity going, you can see an overview that uh, I have 24 instances running. If I click on them, you can see all the various instances and there's three pages worth and it goes down and goes down further. So going back up to the host at the top, if we go over to um, my uh, test node, I have uh, 16 images on it. So basically images are downloaded images and I use various versions of Ubuntu to build my containers. And then if we go over to profiles, I have five profiles. In previous videos, you might have noticed that I built the ONTAG profile, the dual VLAN profile, the VLAN 200 profile, and the IoT profile. So uh, as in addition to the normal default profile. And then um, we also have networks. So these are all the various networks that are on my particular host. And there's quite a few uh, networks out here as well. And then storage pools, well, I only have one storage pool. It's the default storage pool that you get when you install a, a LexD daemon on your machine. And then uh, I only have one project because I haven't started using multiple projects yet. I haven't gotten that far in my learning curve. And uh, I don't currently have any network ACLs. 
So let's see how this product actually works. Let's go to instances. On this note, I don't have any instances running. So I'm going to go ahead and add an instance. And I'll just call this instance test. And it's going to be a container. Um, this thing also supports uh, LexD VMs. And I haven't covered that on my channel yet because I don't yet have a, a setup that supports LexD VMs, but we'll get to that. So I'm going to say it's a container. And the image, I can choose from any of the images that you see here. Let's just pick, uh, let's pick this um, uh, focal fossa image here. And then profile by default is, is going to be the default profile. Uh, we could have picked the other ones, but you're going to see in a minute why we didn't pick those. And then the instant type is going to be whatever you want the size of the machine to be. It seems like they've decided to pick up um, nomenclature that applies to what you might see on, uh, on Amazon AWS here. So I'm going to say I want a T3 micro just to see what it's going to do. And location, I don't have any locations set up, so I'm not sure what that does. So I click OK. It's going to go off and create my instance here. And it's still creating, and now it's created my instance. And my instance is stopped. So I can go ahead and start this instance by clicking on the start, hopefully. All right, well, it wouldn't let me, it's says it's starting it and it gave me an error all right so um, there's other things I'm going to go in here um, on my channel if you remember previously I mentioned that under security configuration that on my particular node I needed to set it privileged to true and I also in the last video talked about setting nesting to true if you wanted to nest um, Docker containers inside your LexD. So let's go ahead and do both of those. And now let's try to turn it on. So now the instance has started correctly. If we go back to instances, you can see that it's currently running. If we click on my instance, we can see that it currently has uh, an internal IP address of 10.0.7.10. What if I wanted this to be an external instance? Well, I could go here and edit the profiles, if I can find those, profiles. And uh, I could go ahead and add a profile to this particular machine. And let's go ahead and add the on-tagged LAN profile. And now you see the on-tagged LAN profiles in here. If I stop the machine and restart the machine, And then go back to instances. It's running. But now you notice it has an address that is on my main LAN, the untagged LAN. So you can see that this product is really, really easy to use. Going down on the left side, we have the instances listing. We have images, which are all the images that you downloaded at least one time to build something from. You have profiles. We know what those are from previous videos talking about how to build profiles for LexD from the command line. We have networks. And those are the various network devices you have on your host. We have storage pools. And then this even supports dealing with clusters apparently. So it has some Kubernetes end to it, but I haven't tested that out yet because I do not yet have a Kubernetes cluster. And then we have projects. As I said, I only have the one project. You can set up network ACLs, which I suppose controls who can get to which containers by IP address. Um, operations, I'm not yet sure what that is exactly. I suppose it's operations in progress and certificates. And I don't know what simple stream is. So certificates are, we have to authorize the nodes we want to manage. And we're going to see that in the installation process here. So if we go back up to host and we go back over to VMS Fog, which is my test node, you can see I have the one instance running. And if I go click on that uh, particular instance, there it is running. And we can modify it in any way that we want. 
We can even specify that we want to do a backup or a snapshot. We have snapshot control here. Let's instead go down to the exec and start the exec interface. Ah, yes, we have to have a self-signed certificate. So I go to advanced, I say proceed, and that authorizes that certificate. Dismiss this, now I start that interface. So there we are. We've got an interface to, to the machine. So I'm gonna say add user, Scott. And then I'm gonna say user mod, dash a g pseudo scott putting scott in the pseudo group then i'm going to go ahead and exit this stop the exec interface and now i'm going to go to the console so now if i start the console it'll give me a login and now i have a username to log in with so i type scott i type my password and we're logged in So let's try and take a snapshot of this container. Let's go in here to snapshots. And I always like to create a snapshot after I install a container and do a couple of basic things. I know we haven't done anything here really, but I usually like to create a snapshot called install. So I submit that. It says snapshotting instance up here at the top of the screen. And it should complete pretty quickly here, and it did. And then I'm going to start the machine back up again. Oops, I guess I had started already. It's a good idea to stop the machine before you do snapshots. So now we have it started back up again. Let's go to console and let's start our console. And let's log in. And you can see here if I do an if config, I don't have the if config command installed. Let's do a sudo apt install net dash tools. And now that it's installed, let's do an if config. And there you go. You can see my local address of 172.16.1.201 on this container. So now I stop the console, go back to snapshots. And this time I want to create another snapshot. And I'll say after net-tools is installed. Submit that. It's snapshotting that instance. Should be done in just a second. It's completed. Let's go ahead and restore the snapshot after install. When we restore this snapshot, And we go back to console and we start the console back up again. Sign back in. Since we've installed, we've restored the install snapshot, we should not have an if config command and we do not. All right, so let's do a couple of things this time. Let's stop the console. Let's go into snapshots. Let's restore the snapshot after we install net-tools. It says restoring snapshot. The snapshot's restored. Let's go into profiles. Let's remove the untag profile. And now let's add a profile I have called VLAN 200. If you watched some of my previous videos, you remember that VLAN 200 was one of the profiles we had created previously. So now we'll go ahead and start the machine back up again. Actually, it's stopped, or it is started. Let's start it back up again. Now that it's started back up again, we go back up to general. Let's go down to console. Let's start the console again. Sign back on. And do an if config. The if config command works, and you can also see that now we have a different address in VLAN 200 of 192.168.200.97. So overall, you can see that LexD dashboard has some really fabulous commands in it, 
It's really easy to use and it allows you to do all the things you do from the command prompt except in a really nice and friendly GUI. So here we are at the command prompt on my LexD host and I do a LexD list and you can see I've created an instance called LexD dashboard and that's where we're going to install this LexD dashboard. So in order to do that, <clears throat> I'm going to do a LexC exec LexD dash dashboard Bosch. And that'll put me in the Bosch shell. Now that I'm on the Bosch shell, I'm going to do a an apt install or rather an apt let's do an add user Scott just so I have a username <clears throat> I'm not going to use that username here right off but user mod dash a capital G pseudo Scott so now we have user Scott and Scott is in the is in the user in the pseudo group. So <clears throat> there's a few um, there's a few prerequisites and these are them. We'll put these in the show notes. Go ahead and install all the dependencies here. Now that the dependencies are installed, we want to go ahead and get the project with a wget command. Oh, that's interesting. We don't have wget out here. sudo apt or apt install wget. The marvels of live video. And now we can do the wget command. Extract the tar file. We are copying the tar file to the web location with these two commands. And then it requires three folders to store the volatile data. The first is a SQLite folder. The second is a LexD folder and the third is a backup folder. And then we want to change the file protection of the web branch or the actually the install directory branch and we want to change the file protection on the web branch. And then all we need to do is restart the nginx and that's all there is to that part of it now you want to exit and go back to your host and at your host level we're going to have to do a few things on your LexD host as well but what we're going to do is go back to the web browser and we'll go over to a new web page here. I guess we need to find out where we're running. Uh, let's see list. List. So 172.16.1.207. So we go to 172.16.1.207. And there's the initial login and this is the registration so I'm just going to call myself Scott I'll give myself a really simple password repeat the password put in my email address and then by default SQL lights what's installed so I say register account as soon as it registers the account you can sign on with my username of Scott and my password. Okay, so we don't have any LexD hosts yet. 
And the reason we don't have any hosts is because we have to add them. So we're going to do an add a host. And the address of the host I want to add is the one I was using in this demo, which is 172.16.1.57. And by default, it will be port 443 or 8443. And the alias, the name of that system is BMS Fog. So I do a submit and it says remote host connection is not trusted. So you say, OK, what's going on there? Well, if we do a view certificate, we have to copy the contents of this certificate. Copy that. And then we have to go back down to the command prompt. And we have to create a uh, certificate for this thing. So you want to put it in a place where you want to put it on my node. That's going to be share uh, containers uh, container. Yeah. And uh, so I'm going to do a VI on, um, let's say, uh, cert dot CRT. And then I do an I to put myself in insert mode. And I do a paste to paste the contents of that certificate in. I do an escape colon W to write Q to quit. So now I have this thing called cert.cert. .cert, and you have to use Lexi config trust add cert dot CRT. So that's trusted that certificate. And then you want to do a Lex C config set core dot HTTPS under bar address open bracket colon colon close bracket. Okay, so now that we've done that, if we go back to the interface here and we dismiss it and we try to add a host and we add that host again, this time it gets added. So if I click on the host, there we are. We can look at it. We can manage it. There's the LexD dashboard I created in our previous demo. And we can go up and manage everything that we need to manage. Let's install LexD dashboard in Docker. So here I've logged on to a um, host that I've got. We're, we're going to go ahead and install Docker. I haven't installed Docker yet. So well, let's see. We're missing a curl command. sudo apt install curl. And after we install curl, we should do this. Okay, so curl's installed. Now we install Docker. Okay, now that Docker's installed, we're going to add my user account to the Docker group. So we're going to do a sudo user mod dash a g docker scott and then we're going to do a new grp scott and we'll do a groups and you can see that scott is in the pseudo group and also in the docker group no he's not in the docker group that's interesting i meant didn't mean to do that new group docker and groups Okay, so now Scott is in the pseudo group, the Docker group, and of course he's in his own group. All right, so now I'm going to do a sudo apt install nano, just because I bet nano is not installed, and it isn't. And let's do a sudo apt install 
docker dash compose. And now docker compose is installed. And let's do a make dir docker cd into docker. And then for the purposes of this, we're going to also make dir lexd where. And that's where lexd where is going to store, store all of its volatile information for the Docker container. And then nano docker dash compose dot yml. And there's the docker compose file. Very simple. Lexd dashboard, the image is Lexd dashboard. By default, it uses port 80, but I'm going to expose that on port 8080. You want to change that to whatever port is free on your Docker host, and you cannot change the internal port. Okay, let's save that out. Let's do a docker dash compose up to test it out. It's pulling the container. And now it's attached to the dashboard. So we should be able to make a connection to it. Let's go up to the web browser. And you can see here from my overall instances of my previous installation of LexDware that we're running test on uh, Let's see, it's running on an internal port, but we have to know the address of the Docker container in order to connect to it. So it's going to be 172.16.1.171, 172.16.1.171, colon, port 8080. And there we go. We had to log on for the registration and we proceed as is in this previous example. Now that we know that the LexD dashboard works in Docker, we can do a control C to stop the dashboard. And once we get back to the command prompt, we'll go ahead and do the Docker compose, except with the dash D to detach the image. And that's all there is to it. So if I do a Docker PS, there's the running image. So in summary, LexD Dashboard is a powerful web-based GUI to manage your LexD containers. LexD Dashboard can manage containers on multiple LexD hosts. And LexD Dashboard can create, edit, and delete networks, storage pools, storage volumes, and projects with both forms and JSON files. And LexD Dashboard can create users and groups and apply role-based access control for your LexD container management. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and we'll see you next time.